Today on DC TV, we've got imps, we got knights, and we got apes. I don't know what else to do with these guys. <laughs> Man, I've been waiting for this one. Guys, I told you last week, last week's episode of Supergirl was good. And tonight, on a brand new episode of Supergirl, Mr. Mixia Spitlick shows up. Mixia Spitlick is in Supergirl, one of the best all-time Superman villains, question mark, pests more like it. Oh my gosh, and it's pronounced Mixia Spitlick. Thank you very much, Superman the Animated Series. So Mixie shows up, he professes his undying love to Supergirl. He believes that she is his OTP, as the kids would say. <laughs> and all of a sudden, boom, she's in a wedding dress. He proposes the whole shebang. He's got fifth dimensional imp powers, he can manipulate reality. This guy is gonna be something to deal with. But Mixie has to deal with mon L, AKA Tall, Dark, and Blansom. Oh boy, and mon has got some ideas of how to handle Mixie because he encountered fifth dimensional imps back on Dax him, and when Monel brings up his ideas to Kara, well, let's just say that uh, they might butt heads a little bit. <laughs> uh, and this is gonna be tough because once you're wooed by the magical Mixie, there's no going back, see. So, is this gonna be a close encounter of the fifth kind, or is Supergirl going to figure out how to deal with Mixie Spitlick and be a real nasty woman, <laughs> as Mixie would say? Uh, you gotta watch tonight's episode to find out. Plus, I got your hookup right here, guys. I got your hookup, your comic book connection, one of my favorite comics of all time, my absolute favorite, Mixie Spitlick story, you're gonna look for Superman and Batman, World's Funnest. Now, the title might be misleading. It actually doesn't star soups and bats. It stars Mr. Mixus Spitlick and Batmite. Yes, Batmite. The two imps, magical imps, are going head to head in a competition and they're tearing through every single possible universe of the DC multiverse and it is hilarious. You've got tons of different universe cameos. You've got tons of different artists contributing to this awesome epic story. They're going to the Golden Age, the Silver Age, the Modern Age, Crisis on Infinite Earths, Kingdom Come with art by Alex Ross, the DC Animated Universe with art by Bruce Timm. It is fantastic, so go check out Superman and Batman World's Funnest and have a good time when you're watching Mixie tonight on Supergirl. You guys, I cannot believe I get to announce this, but on an all new episode of Flash, Tuesday night, Jessie Quick has shown up to Earth One because her dad has been kidnapped. Oh my gosh, where's her dad? Gorilla City? Um, kinda, it's good. Uh, one more time again, one more again, what? Gorilla City? How do you explain to the people watching The Flash that there is a city of hyper-intelligent, super-evolved gorillas and it has been remained hidden on Earth? Well, it's easy, it's on Earth 2. It's been on Earth 2. Oh, okay, we gotta go save Harrison Wells. We gotta go save Harry. Cisco, Caitlin, Barry, and Julian head over and an excursion to Gorilla City and Earth 2. Welcome to the jungle, baby. <laughs> it is a literal planet of the apes, this planet. It's nuts. And as soon as they encounter Gorilla Grodd, he tells them that he needs Team Flash's help to take down Solovar, ruler of Gorilla Kind, leader of Gorilla City. Why? Because apparently the dude intends to invade Earth 1. What? Also, he's voiced by Keith David. Awesome, that is awesome, that is so cool. Meanwhile, back in Central City, Jesse Quick and Kid Flash have to stay behind and keep the city safe while Team Flash is away having fun in the jungle. <laughs> uh, I cannot believe this is gets to happen. I cannot believe we're getting Gorilla City on the Flash. They've been teasing it since season one. We're finally getting a full-blown Gorilla Grot in Gorilla City. It is very exciting. And then, after the flash on an all new Legends of Manana, pieces of the Spear of Destiny are being protected by members of the JSA strewn about time. First, in the year 3000, Dr. Midnight is keeping a piece safe. Then, in King Arthur's Camelot, Stargirl is keeping a piece of the Spear of Destiny safe. So we get to visit both of these awesome locations and we get to hang out at King Arthur's court and meet the Knights of the Round Table, King Arthur and Queen Guinevere, as well as Sir Galahad, Nate, who dresses like a leper. We really like Sarah Lance a lot. And we finally get to meet in this episode, a Sir Raymond of the Palms, yes. It is up to you, gentle viewer, to see the exploits of thine favorite legends, to protect safe the realm and all of the realms from the Legion of Dom. And now I will give you your best and greatest comic book connection that you could ever hope to dream of. The episode title is called Camelot Slash 3000. It is in reference to the 1982 miniseries Camelot 3000 with fantastic art by Brian Bolland. The story goes as such. In the year 3000, aliens have invaded Britain and a young boy named Tom Prentice inadvertently wakes up the slumbering King Arthur of Arthurian legend. It is up to him to find his sword, 
possibly some alien technology, and fight back and bring together the world, perhaps with the help of Merlin and his Knights of the Round Table. So please, journey forth and find that comic book and enjoy your comic booking in this classic series. And you're welcome. <laughs> Happening on Legends of Tomorrow, Tuesday night. And I got the rest of your DC TV lineup for the week right here. Brand new episode of Arrow on Wednesday and a new episode of Powerless on Thursday. Time for your answers to your question of the week. Last week I asked you guys, who would you want to be your Valentine from any DC TV show? And y'all answered. Here we go. Crazy Kid says, my Valentine's date would be a bagel. <laughs> I appreciate the honesty. That's great. Mm -hmm. Claude Frankenstein says, I would go on a date with Caitlin Snow. We would be midway through dinner when there would be an emergency, making her need to leave early and would never call me again. The tacos would be awesome though. You know what, no comment? That comment speaks for itself, nicely done. The Legend 2000 says, Hector, Mr. McZipsal Spitlick is taking yo girl. I ain't worried about it, it's fine. Gene Second says, I would date The Flash because adorable Barry Allen, enough said. Yeah, good point, Barry is like a solid dude, solid dude. Epic Times Gaming says Supergirl would be a cool Valentine. Hey, yeah, I know. Get in line, buddy. Falcon Zero says I would choose Caitlyn Snow, aka Killer Frost, on the Flash CW because I love her to make me some frozen yogurt. <laughs> I don't know if that's gross or if that's like cute. Oh, uh, we'll go with cute. We'll, we'll go with cute. Reverse Flash says defiantly either Supergirl or White Canary, and he is defiant about it. Fair enough. Obarium says dream date. Patty Spivet, we'd go bowling or something. She'd win. That's pretty realistic, I like that. Hugo H. Pereira says, I'd go to a karaoke bar with Dinah Drake's Black Canary. I just hope we wouldn't run into the music meister. <laughs> Cause he's the music meister. <clears throat> hmm. That's weird. Um, I don't see, uh... Uh, Melissa, I noticed that you didn't comment on the question of the week. That's cool. Feel free to comment on this next one. Guys, here's your next question of the week. We all know that to get Mr. McZipsal Spitlick to get the heck out of here, we've got to trick him into saying his name backwards. How would you guys trick Mixie into saying his name backwards? Go ahead and comment below. And that is the summation of what is happening on the finest television programs this week. But remember, young gentle viewers, to journey forth to dccomics.com after all of your favorite episodes aireth for full recaps thanks to the hashtag DCTVCouchClubeth. Until next time, fare thee well. Hey, hey, enough with the voice. Cut it out. Enough with the voice. You don't do a good job of it. Stop. Sorry.